Welcome back, armchair generals and railway enthusiasts. This is Gamer1745 here with the new IKB. Say hi, IKB. Hello, everybody. And we're going to continue our playing of Railway Empire and looking at railway development and societal changes in Britain um, in the currently, well, 1830s, 1840s time frame. And so we're going to let this go forward. We need to deliver more steel to Newcastle. And we need to see about buying up um, this railway company down here as a goal. Now, what would that cost? Um, ooh, 39, 38 million. So we don't have anywhere near the money to buy them yet. But we could, we could buy more um more stocks and shares in his company and do a bit of a slow stealth takeover. Yeah, I think we will. But right now, I'm just looking here at sort of freezing them out, and I think if we can, hmm. We've got a blocker station in Bath, so they can't do a Somerset and Dorset into Bath. Just so you know, I needed toilet paper. All right, buying our shares. Okay, well, what I'm trying to think here is, let's look at a place like Black Back. Okay, they just need, they, well, they need wheat. Where can we get wheat from? Hmm, wheat. Okay, up north up here north of wales or in the northern part there we're out here mm, do we want to expand out to dover in regions that might be the ticket no, that, that might be a thing to do well see what i'm thinking is if we can do a few developments to like southampton and um bath and jovel here um get them wheat rolling in we can earn money faster to be able to take them over so so instead yeah. of buying s shares just yet guess what my request will be for the london area i don't know but he wants you <laughs> i to think guess. i can already guess oh no i think it's going to be he wants a cab ride a cab ride oh wow Yes, we yeah, I suppose if we do head out in the East Anglia building, sort of, I guess the London and London to Brighton main line and the London Chatham and Dover railway, then that could provide some. Uh, okay, well, some interesting cab rides for Arno. Let's see about bringing. Connecting the southeast up to London here. Hmm. Okay, that looks have we got the let's see about lowering it down a little bit. Oh, we need to attach it to here, I think. There. There go. Way. Have we got the right ends connected to the right ends of the stations? Yeah, that's what I'm just checking now. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, relatively straight, using the terrain a bit. There we go. Yep, looks quite good. As even though the south of England is thought of as being very flat, it's, um, well not as flat as everyone thinks. It would just be a higher angle. There we go. Okay, so in and out of London this way. Arno wants to know if it's possible to play in the Netherlands in this game, and uh, I honestly don't know. 
Never, never. The, the Netherlands. Netherlands. Oh, um. No, I don't. There's. I think. Didn't Germany did? Did we go into the Netherlands a little bit? I'm not I don't sure. No, if we did, I don't think we did. I don't think France does, and they're done. They're done developing this game. They've stated so. This is no more DLCs are coming, unfortunately. And I don't know of a Netherlands mod. Okay, so there, that's connected to through to there. So now everyone, so now all of the um, rich people in London can go to Brighton on their holidays. Absolutely. Oh, the common folk get to go to Brighton now. Yes. They, the, 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 folk, the, so. the, the rich people have been coming down here. Um, Prinny built his um, uh, palace down here, didn't he? Yep. And the Prince of Wales built, I forget what it was, Nonsuch? Or no, that was, no, that was a... Um, uh, uh, Elizabeth, or before, uh, what's before, what, what's the term before Elizabethan? Before Elizabethan, um, Judah. Judah, is that what they called the, the period? Yeah, before the, um, before Elizabeth the first, it was the Tudors. Was the oh, Judah the Tudors, period. okay, yeah, Tudors, yeah. but, okay, but I was, because, you know, Jacobean, um, Elizabethan, Tudor, I guess, yeah, Tudor era, Nonsuch was, was a, a, a Tudor palace. I forget, because, um, you know, the Prince of Wales, um, is who becomes George the Fourth, builds a, a you know a palace. Brighton down Pavilion. Desert. Yeah, okay, that's Brighton it. Brighton Pavilion. Yeah. Very um, looks like it came from in. Looks like someone imported it brick by brick from India. Yeah, that type of thing. Yes, or at least an Englishman's concept of that. Of what that would look like. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so now all of the um, now all of the common folk can also go on holiday in Brighton. Let's shift this a little bit this way. Okay, so I come across there, come up a bit. Yeah, I don't want to dig too deep into it. But maybe we will do that. There we go. And the outside or south side to yes, okay. And that's that connected up. And putting together what eventually becomes in about eighty-five or so years in game time will eventually become um the Southern Railway, essentially. So since we've now got connections that go all the way from more or less the furthest east point in the country to more or less the furthest west since we haven't quite taken over we're, we're, we're still we're still going to put something out to dover so that yeah we're getting there we're getting there so i think now might be a good time to mention the um the effect that the railways had on the standardization of time yes because of course even in a comparatively small country such as Great Britain, the um oh, the difference in time between in you know, when it was you know, high noon as in the sun directly overhead between London and Bristol added up to about twelve to fifteen minutes. Okay. Which is more than enough to make you miss your train. Mm hmm So it was the rail coming of the railways that spurred on the introduction of you know, standardized time and got the entirety of the country running on Greenwich Mean Time. So basically London still, time essentially. They lose your money. And I think that's a good thing. I think we're gonna put a terminal station out here in Dover. 
Yeah. I don't think there's anywhere to go from there. They're not going to build a channel for a long time. No. I mean, there were thoughts given to building a channel tunnel um, around the um, end of the 1800s, early 1900s, but it was always um, often got shot down because everyone was worried the French would use it to invade. Right. Now, now to Dover, did, did they seriously it. think that the French would use it to invade? I think that was more of an excuse for politicians to say no, they didn't want it built. But I right. think it was partially that and partially the thought of, or even though it could theoretically be flooded or you could just you know, build an awful lot of defensive fortifications around the tunnel entrance. I think they yeah, were that, that of, to me seems like... Um... The, I think they the were. Thing. I think the actual military minds were a bit more worried that if the French were able to get somehow perform a seaborne landing somewhere in the south of England and then take the English end of the tunnel, they'd then be able to resupply without having to rely on shipping. And that, then that, that, might, then make, that might be a thing. Yes. And then that way you would um you know that way the sort of you the supremacy of the Royal Navy wouldn't mean anything because, of course, Britain's right. primary line of defence has always been the Navy. Yes. So having the... I think the, the actual milita military objections were less so the thought of it being used as a invasion route in and of itself and more of a... If someone does get a foothold in, you know, South East England, then they might be able to use it to resupply themselves without having to rely on surface shipping, which would then make it a lot harder, especially in a time before aircraft and right. such things, to um, prevent that. And so now we're joining up London to Dover, so I guess this is going to be yeah. our version of the London Chatham and Dover Railway. Right. I think we'll come to here to here. Because once you, once you get to steam powered, I mean obviously the Royal Navy is the you know, the defense of Britain, but it's no longer the problem of which way is the wind blowing. It's can now the French, a problem. Can the, yeah, can the French get out of the port and and get to, you know, Britain, which was very, very um, concerning to the Admiralty at all times. Yes, it, become, it goes from being, and that is why the, the features of sort of the Industrial Revolution is that suddenly you are no longer dependent upon the vagaries of nature for uh, your ends, be that you know, producing you know, you know, cotton in textile factories up in the, the north of England or whether that be mining or such. You're no longer, you know, you either have a form of transport that doesn't depend upon water and animal power you have forms of you know, stationary power for driving your factories that are no longer dependent on water power or animal power or wind power. So you can, for the first time My in the history of you lost your human existence, today. you are no longer confined by, so confined by what nature is doing. Mm -hmm. So you, even in, you know, everyone always thinks of Britain as being quite a um you know a place where it rains a lot. But yes, there, there it, are especially the west coast of Scotland. It does rain a lot there. Yeah. But the, but there are parts of the country where if you have a a bit of a drought during the summer, where your amount of um you know, the amount of water that you might be able to store up in your mill pond to run a a factory that's powered by a mm -hmm. big water mill, 
or how much water you'd be able to store up to top up your canal as the water level on it goes down from sort of general leakage and the fact that every time you open a, a canal lock to let a, a boat go through to go up and down the hills water is effectively running downhill it's just getting stopped by the canal lock waiting for a bit and then when the canal lock doors open it goes down another stage and so right. for the first time you're no longer reliant upon the vagaries of the weather you yeah. is it going to rain enough this year for us to store enough water to keep the mill running is it gonna you know are we gonna have a good enough harvest to have enough food to keep all of our horses fed for you know, pulling canal boats or pulling carts are we we're no longer reliant on which way the wind's blowing for sailing out at sea okay. and so it's very much this is the first time in human history that you know, the decisions about you know, it stops being what is nature likely to do it becomes a lot more based on you know, human input you know are we going to have enough you know, are we mining enough coal are we mining enough iron are we making enough steel right the, 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 the industrial revolution is um we're doing hi hello um call me um this is railway empire we're just we're, we're um ikb and i are recording episodes so you're free to hang out uh, i didn't change the stream name uh we're making these together and we're talking about society society and the changes the first um is the industrial revolution is is a big chain okay we're getting a little bit of a bottleneck here um that happens like you so, oh we can't expand the station because they bought this damn okay um that the, the re, you know like you're saying the industrial um revolution changes things so that you are not dependent upon human um muscle power or animal muscle power or like you say windmills or water mills for um power okay i could be north of yavel to try to build the warehouse there or south um, I think we're probably going to have more room to the north. Okay. I mean, if we go south, then we've got to deal with trying to cross over his lines even more, possibly. Well, so we're gonna have to cross over. I know. Well, I'm gonna. We're gonna. Okay, we're gonna cross over this one. We're gonna cross over this one. We're gonna cross over here. Yeah, we can come up. I th yeah, no, I think north is maybe the, the key. Okay, so you get the Industrial Revolution. And that changes, you know, humanity is, you know, how much food can you grow? We start becoming less of the issue. Um, and that is most assuredly a, um, a very welcome thing other major development that changes humanity which is after well is um well f well first sort of in this period is is inoculations against various diseases and then antibiotics that come along and so we're no longer where humanity is is no longer dying f so readily at least from diseases and infections and all of that. I've already warned you about crossing me. Yes. Okay. So we're going to, I think, oh, maybe a large train. What can we do it with a? We can always expand larger. Yeah. Let's do this here. You want a large, um, large warehouse? Well, I think just a train station there. So for pigs and. Wheat. Right. Right. So what we're going to see about doing here is come out of the sort of northern half of this. I'm going to connect through to there like that. Okay. Uh, we can lower this a bit. Oh, button up and down. And 
There we go. Okay, so we come there with that. And so, yeah, humanity really ch starts to change in this time frame, unlike anything it's seen before. And the Industrial Revolution is the first part of it. Okay, now we're going to... Let's see. We want to connect to there, but we want to... Okay, let's put in a warehouse here. Right, okay. So let's... Firehouse 24, somewhere in deepest, darkest Hamp Hampshire. Oop. Let's see if we can get this. That bridge is awful. Um, Might be if you move the um, yeah. point That's before the bridge further. Okay. Um, no, that looks like our best sort of compromise there. Right. Now we're going to cross there. I mean, it is freight traffic, so it doesn't have to move too quickly, because well, in this okay. game we don't have to worry about the, um, the difficulties of keeping things fresh on a long journey. No, we don't. And that is definitely a benefit for us. Because that was part of what allowed cities to grow so much in this period is the fact that you have the railways able to bring in vast amounts of food. It gets there in time that it is still fresh and good to eat. Okay. And there have even been um it's sort of this this around this sort of time that you start getting, you know, maybe a little bit later, you start seeing, you know, Instead of, you know, smaller local mills for turning, you know, grain into flour, you start seeing much larger steam-powered mills that take in, you know, train loads of grain and mill that into flour. Right. But then gets bagged up and shipped out to acres to make bread for everyone to buy and stuff like that. Yes, the the big switch. Okay, so that um, looks mechanization good. of production at almost every level. Okie dokie. That doesn't look too awful. It's a little bit a little more expensive, but mostly it's Bigger bridges, right? All right, parallel track. I mean, having sort of semi random bridges in the middle of nowhere isn't too unprototypical because you can just say they're farmers' bridges so that the farmer can still get his, his cows and sheep from one field to the next. Yep, yeah. and um, you did have a fair number of viaducts. Yes. Okay. Um, still. There are a great many, great many viaducts. Okay, so we're moving wheat along this path to here, and then from here we will see about connecting. See, let's get to sort of an optimum point here. Um, That's very true, um, Call Me Lob. You do have to think think ahead what you're going to do, and you also have to try and you know, think ahead in such a way that you can have make sure that the AI can't mess up your plans. 
Yeah. We... Because the AI players will build all sorts of horrible things in horrible places. Yeah. Um, I do sort of quote unquote cheat in this game by sticking unused. A, a city in this game can have up to two um, railway stations and they can have external warehouses that are connected. You can see if when we hover over this, we see that it is connected to this city. But so I just build these cheap railway stations there to keep the AI from expanding in my territory. So otherwise it starts getting harder and harder to build things. So it's a, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it cheating, considering the sort of shenanigans that railway companies at, at this time and a little bit later were pulling to try and get their, um, to try and get out of having to try and you know, combat competi the competition that they didn't want and such. So yeah, I wouldn't yeah. call it cheating and okay. take sixteen percent. Right. Okay. So we're coming. We're coming across there. And we've now connected that up. Yeah. It does almost make me wonder for some of these if it would be better to um. The line that's going underneath. I do wonder if maybe in some place it'd be better to pull that up and rebuild it, but sort of dug down on a slightly lower level. Yeah. It probably could be, but I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we could fine tune this greater than we have. Um, I'm sure we could if we had the time and the patience. Yeah, and, and get somebody who's more OCD than at least myself would probably do some of that. So I now do that find my I do find myself looking at this and wishing that there was a mod to replace those modern-looking steel truss bridges with um nice speak with nice um you know stone and brick arch viaducts yeah i don't think there's a, a graphical mod for something like that okay so what we're doing is we're setting up to this warehouse will accept wheat we're going to come back here at this wheat farm and we're going to bring in wheat to that that was I mean, we're building for the future that's how i very much look at this and set this up if you have any um call me if you have any um uh, railway questions do ask us because uh, ikb is a bit of an expert on a lot of this stuff so um only a bit only a bit, only a bit but in in the realms that we deal with he is um, i don't know anybody nearly as knowledgeable as him so we have that flowing into there we're going to now come here Let's see what we can do with, well, now let's, let's delete this for the moment, put it back. I'm going to delete the supply tower just so it's not influencing my placement of this. Okay, so let's see if we were to come here and connect that up. Okay, you're going to want to come down. We probably don't need to make this a little less steep, right like that. Okay, so that way this warehouse gets put into this system. Sure thing. And viewers later can also ask stuff in the chat as well. So now we need a do not enters unless it's clear signals here. Okay, now since we're going to split this off, we might as well have the supply tower back here. So the train's going to both locations. Can use it. And this warehouse here will also accept wheat. I do believe they want wheat. Every city does. Not a lot at this stage, but that's fine. We will grow the city. So with that now, there they use apples for their... Um, and yes, after we get some of this built, uh, Arno, we will do a 
Um, we will do a cab ride for Arno. Yes. Um, okay, well, I guess they're going to get it from wagons for a while from over here for their um, needs, and they will. Oh, okay. Um, Arno's telling us to do it. Yes, 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 yes. Now let's come over here and build another warehouse. I think we might just start with a regular sized one. We We're expand. thinking go for go for Barnstable. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think we will start from this. Um. No, Arno telling us that the Emperor Palpatine commands it. Well, that's special. Isn't that special? Okay. So let's do a railway cut there a bit. Maybe bring this up just a bit there. Soften the, the steepness of the grade. I think that's, yeah, I think. Okay. Now out here also except wheat. I mean, we are in game terms, we are still living in the um, the reign of William the uh, William the Fourth. So we haven't even made it into Victorian times yet. We've still got another we've still got another month or so before Queen Victoria will be taking the throne in in game time. Okay, let's see. We're going to come down here, um, and I think we should be seeing. Yes, there we go. Let's come um, get a um, ride along here. There we go. It's looking back behind us. Let's see. Load up the. Add the cars to here. There we go. See Dover and the connection to the filthy French. That's yep. A straight perspective forward, but maybe a little better here. And of course, the second if we build a second station in Dover at some point, we'll have to name it. We name it Dover Ferry Terminal. Hmm. Go. Back behind us. Oh, go away. This is looking pretty good. Come up along the ridge here. That would be the Thames Estuary. Uh, yeah, the Thames. Coming up towards. Chatham, mm -hmm. where there was a royal shipyard, mm -hmm, which, um, so. as, which Arno will, um, will probably have heard of as being the place where the Dutch this decided to um, style message. commit a bit of um, Grand Theft warship and decided to steal a few, um, a few British warships during one of the Anglo-Dutch wars. Okay. Yes. De Rotor, I believe. Yes. Yes, this is this is a really cool game. If you like building railways and figuring out um, passenger flows, um, this is starting the very earliest days on um, this DLC. The basic sort of one starts is, is in America, but they also have a German it shows, you know, goes through German railway development in French. So, and so we're coming into London. There's the Tower of London, 
actually have a unique model for that. No, that's not the tower. That's that's that. Big, big tower. Ben. That's Big Ben. Big ben. Gamer. The, the, the tower is is the castle that's there, not not Big Ben. Boy, yes, I do know these oh. things. <laughs> this stuff I do know. I was just getting that wrong. Okay, yeah. so now we've gone I into mean, London. Big Ben and the rebuilt Houses of Parliament shouldn't even be there at this time. They were built yeah. during Queen Victoria's reign. Yeah, they're a bit later. Have you after noticed the fire. my new factory yet? Okay. Everything's on the cutting now, edge let's... of technology. So yeah, so that uh, um, that can be done on any of these trains going anywhere on the map, yes. at least of our our railway, not the competitors. And now research, we got some research points. We're going to go with um, the Firefly two two two. It's enormous machines. The Firefly was an impressive example of the fast paced progression. So um, now, okay, I think most of our um, most of our city railways will convert Fire over to the Firefly. This locomotive could be better because um, less tractive power. But okay, so um, let's do that. You had maybe something to say about the Firefly. Yes, the Firefly was a locomotive, well, a class of locomotives built by um, Sir Daniel Gooch, who was the locomotive superintendent designer of the first of the Great Western Railway that ran between London and Bristol. And of course, the Great Western Railway was built by a certain Isambard Kingdom Brunel, who or IKB. If, IKB, if, if, as yeah. I have, uh, I, I have stolen his, um, stolen his, his name for my, uh, my, my, oh. my internet alias, and right. he was, um, he had a, a slight habit of deciding that, you know, building railways to the, you know, tr to the track gauge of four foot eight and a half inches, as was the sort of accepted standard at the time, was uh, a bit small. And he thought, no, we can do better than this. You know, why are we you know, essentially just copying you know, the, ac the, the you know, axle lengths of a horse and cart? Let's do better. He decided instead of having the rail the rails being four foot eight and a half inches apart, he decided to have them seven foot and a quarter inches apart. So a little bit less than you know, about maybe you a third about maybe you. Another third or so further apart, thereby giving you theoretically a lower center of mass, and also allowing you to carry have you bigger wagons, bigger carriages, so you can carry more people in a shorter train. Now, understand would that would that have been substantially better? Realizing that bridges and tunnels would have to be wider, um, you know, I, I'm not saying what we currently have is ideal, but would wider necessarily have been, or that would that for that much further wider, would that have been the best solution? Do you think or not? It's hard to say because when the um. Of course, having railways to two different track gauges caused a few issues with the transshipment of goods, and eventually a parliamentary inquiry was launched to work out, okay, which one is the best. And the result of that inquiry did eventually come back saying that, you know, board gauge is better, but there's so much more standard gauge that for, it just made more made logical sense to make, you know, four foot eight and a half the standard rather than seven foot and a quarter. Because mm -hmm. basically the only places that used board gauge was the Great West, was the Great Western Railway and a few sort of sub and a few other subsidiary lines that were, I mean, theoretically built by separate companies, but all of the engineering design work was done by Brunel, and it was. They were they, those railways might as well have been considered to be um, the Great Western's little empire, so to speak. 
Okay, now, do you know, IKP, the difference between if there is um, U.S. railway gauge and British railway gauge? Um, in, the, in America, the track gauge is the same, or for okay. 10 and a half inches. But in America, the loading gauge, which is how tall you're allowed to have um, right. locomotives and wagons and carriages, and how wide they're allowed to be, overhanging from the side of the track is a lot is a lot lot bigger okay which is why american locomotives and trains in general look so huge is because even though the track gauge is the same the amount of overhang they're allowed and the amount of height they're allowed is so much greater right didn't realize that Now, um, at like this time in the 17 or the 1830s, I mean, um, I, I presume it would be iron rails or would it be steel rails? Um, still, uh, still, it would still be iron rails. When did, when did the general use switch over, do you know, in U.S. and or Britain to steel rails? Steel doesn't really come about until you get the, um... So you get the ability to mass produce steel in bulk quantity. So that's going to be about the time, about the time that a uh, certain fellow by the name of Bessemer invents the Bessemer process for converting um, molten molten iron into steel. Okay. So Do you have a year a date for that, or a rough, you know? That's about the 1850s. Okay. And okay, it so takes so a it's a while on from then. So 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 by like the eighteen sixties, eighteen seventies, it would be mostly steel rails. Well, it'd be mostly steel for new construction, but a lot of okay. um, you know, rail tends to last quite a long time. Right. So you would only you would only upgrade and replace it when you had to, because. Uh, Arno wants to know what's the difference between the two. Um, iron rails um, aren't as strong. They tend to be more. They tend to be more brittle, so they're more likely to crack and shatter under uh, you, know, you know, loads that they're not designed for. And steel basically get steel rails are more flexible, you know, more ductile. They don't break so easily. And you basically, they're stronger per a given amount of material. So you don't need to make that they can carry, you know, they're, they're more durable, as Paul mm -hmm. Meatlob is saying. So you don't need as much, you know, for, for a given amount of, of for, for a, given a given profile of rail, if you make it out of iron, well, it will be, it will carry much, you only be able to carry less weight than if you would say make the same profile of rail out of steel. Now, I presume most of the um, railway um, spikes would be iron so that they were a bit more malleable when you're hammering them in to secure the rails to the what we in America call the ties. Yes, the ties, the wooden cross bits, which in um, in British parliaments, in British parliaments, are referred to as sleepers. Right. And there's, it depends on what method you. Because there are, they very quickly become different methods for how to exactly fix rails down to sleepers. But it was um. Even spikes eventually become steel because, but they tend to be made of a. I think they tend to. They probably go for a slightly harder grade of steel that's going to be much more suited to being hammered into a sleeper. So of course, people say steel, but steel you know, is a covers a multitude of different types of steel depending on how much carbon and other elements have been added into it. Yes, yeah, steel as as which um, from a lot of various empire building and um, war games. It is a um, a product, not a um, like a resource like iron or coal. That it, you know, it's a product that is made, and it is a um, an alloy. It, it, it's very hard. Yeah, being, it's an say, with carbon. alloy of 
carbon and iron and potentially other things that you might want to put in there too. Right. So it's a manufactured item as opposed to a raw material or a refined material. Okay, so all of our, we've got basically all of our city to city connections upgraded to the Firefly, which upgraded to the Firefly, which is three percent less tractive um, power, but is thirty one, you know, it's 10, 10 miles an hour faster. So hopefully we won't be losing too much to the lack of tractive power and speed for that. But we've kept all the rest John Bulls so that they will carry cargo a bit better. Yes. Now it is, um, if you should want to be able to see a working replica of the Firefly on broad gauge track, then the um, Great Western Society's Museum at Digcot in the UK have a, um, have a working replica of the Firefly, complete with a short section of broad gauge demonstration track, so you can go for a ride behind it. What's quick about it? That's quite normal for me. So, should you want to see one in real life, that is where you have to go. And I will, um... I will drop a quick link to the uh, Didcot Railway Centre, which is well worth a visit, into the chat. Very good. And I will also drop a link on that into um, into Discord, into the, the Train Videos channel, so that Gamer can find that to put in a description later. That would be very helpful. Yes, I don't think we need pigs any further out this way. So this is just going to be a mm, feeder warehouse for this. And before anyone asks, no, the Great Western Railway Society, Railway Society and Digcock Railway Centre have not paid me in any way to say that. That is purely because I have been there and I think it is a very good... Um, a very good museum and heritage site. Stop and me. If you are in that part of the UK, I would strongly advise you to go and pay them a visit. They're going to accept pigs. We're going to run a John Bull. I'm telling the truth, Arno. I'm telling the truth. I wish I had a... Um, if, if any museum out there wants to, even in a small way, sponsor uh, a video or the channel generally, please contact me and we will gladly take your sponsorship and promote your, your museum. So, um, whether it's the um, Royal Tank Museum or or any any sort of basic museum out there we will gladly take your sponsorship now okay so let's set up another warehouse over here so i don't want potatoes connected to it so let's let's do this. A warehouse of Brighton. Right. Yes, and that will supply all of those lovely new hotels with uh, food. Well, actually, more the manufacturing, the, or the um, butchering. Right. Let's well. pop that up. Do that now. Okay, it didn't end up helping much. I do think it might be helpful to lay track in shorter sections so that you've got more options for. Mm, yeah. 
Okay, we'll try that. Okay, hopefully that will be... Yeah, we don't need to go somewhere here. There we go. That's I'll give you better. maybe... Um... Yep, that looks good. Coming in there now. Have, have we yes. got enough maintenance facilities? No, we do not. I think Glad since we, we have did. just upgraded our um, upgraded our locomotive fleet, I think we might need to go round and make sure we have Sufficient locomotives, sufficient um, servicing facilities for all our locomotives. Yeah. Um, okay, we have one. Okay, both, at least both stations in London have it, and that's a major destination. So they'll get there. Up in Oxford, yes, we have that. Warehouse, warehouse here north of London has it. Both of them do. So, okay, so this area is fairly good. Okay, so it's not perfect, but we're, we've got that. Let's take a look at the, what our first lack. Okay, clothing and timber and coal, actually, but okay. Clothing and, not well, um, lumber, cut wood. Clothing we've been trying to bring in. Let's... Like cloth, well, no, actually, we're, um, okay, there. This is our tailor's center, and they need, they got plenty of cloth. Um, we, they haven't grown enough to expand their facility, so they need fish and fruit. To expand more. They don't even have a warehouse as part of the pop. Okay, we have fruit out here. We have fish, well, in the southeast. Yeah, out here. Okay. So, um, is it fish down? out on the, uh, yeah, out on the east coast. So let's see, well, okay, I think we're going to have to go with a large warehouse, big warehouse, so that we can get it at the far side of this river and still have it connected. Uh, there we go. How far are new? Are you from new trains? Okay, um, well, we can take a quick look at that here okay this is the research um progression tree you get we're currently we're getting 14 points per month um we have 28 innovation points and so new engines or you can upgrade elements of an engine or you can eventually get new types of train cars so we're, we're a fair fair ways off from any new developments and then of course we can also spend um research the same research points over here to sort of develop the corporate side of things a bit more um, either way so now we have this here and we want to connect that up there to get fruit maybe to get wheat but that's been coming in sort of naturally now okay
Well, let's be hmm, a bit tricky about some of this. Connect both of these here. That might just do it. Um, yeah, I can come around that way. So what, let's let's see. Can we get one thing I don't like about this game is it doesn't let you do flat do um have rails crossing rails on the flat like a di like a diamond crossing or something. Well, you can do intersections, but they get complicated. Yeah, is you can't just have two lines going, you know, not have them yeah. having set the points, but just crossing each other. Yeah, so bridges are become a an expensive thing. Okay, so no, this way. Well, if I held down the right key, it would work better. I know that. I'm just not looking at what key I'm holding down at times. Right. Okay, so we're going to move. So in these points to here, so won't, the waiting train won't block that. And what we're going to see about doing here is come this way across to here. Um, well, let's see if we can turn this a bit more like this. Across to here and okay. Um, like that okay so that will get this into this network here okay we don't need to go down and then back up so let's put that a little flatter there there we go there we go that's good yeah that looks good come around into here right. nope. okay so what I'm hoping to do here is um, now we want over here we want to have them get fruit apples or However you want to say that. So we're going to set a train that goes from here to here. Now it's going to come and do a switch here at the farm. But hopefully that isn't too busy to jam it up too much. And we'll put a John Bull there. Have the train come into the manor farm in reverse. Yep. Right. And when what I'm thinking here is um, we're going to come... We also need um, uh, fish. We've got fish out here. And so let's see, they would come this way through the London warehouse, up through here, up through here. Just, it didn't, well, didn't look like a good place to turn off here. So I figured we'd come looping back up around there. So that is a long way. Can we do, hmm, not easily because we'd have to cross we could connect from here to here but because here's sort of our on the flat to some degree we had to do a bypass around um yeah i think we'll just I think we might have to yeah, run this from here to Which way are you thinking of going? Do you think of going through London or going around? I guess yeah, just coming through the London warehouse. Right. And we need to make sure that we are receiving fish as well. And another job. Okay, so hopefully those deliveries and we'll um, also Come Since it's a fish so, train, we need to rename it to be the Yeah, uh, We're not going to rename all of them, but <laughs> it's a little too much. But yeah, the flying kipper is what he wants to rename it. 
So, yep, long way, but as he said, fortunately the fish won't go bad. So this one is heading to the fisheries, the fisheries heading there, so sort of uh, they'll pass each other along the way. And so we want to grow this town so that we can grow the um, tailors or the clothing manufacturing up. And, and London was also looking for more cut lumber. That's um, Oxford, that isn't London. This cut lumber comes from... Uh, um, up here. Um, I think Leeds is our best bet. Yes. How is Leeds doing, Leeds doing for logs and lumber? Okay, they need more just logs. Well, they got, well they've got plenty of lumber, so let's... Let's actually set up a um, from Leeds down through to um, how does that path look? That path looks, I think, the best. We're going to give priority here, and I think we can do it from this track, can we? Um, no, we can't. Okay, we need to do it from this track here. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it. Train station with signals there. So priority of lumber, and because of that, we're going to give it to John Bull. Deal with greater weight, presumably. And then... You're also pumping out lumber on. Invest a little in your train's reliability. Can we connect those other two station, those other two lines at Leeds, into so we could run both? Mm, not easily. I'm just you can see here. Trying to get him cut across the bridge and then connect would just add more traffic jam, I think. Now, I think we will see about... Um, buy some more shares of the company here. We need... Okay, yeah, let's... Just one more shear, and you'll be lying six feet under. Gives us some more shares there. So that might allow us to... Oh, Yeovil's grown. Yeah. Okay, so we're growing this, which is good, which means we're going to make more money. Supplying it, what more do they need? Okay, nothing more that we can deliver, but they're getting all their deliveries. And they're doing fairly well. And we are earning lots of money. I'm so rich, I'm only doing this for fun. Okay, we've got 30 loads of steel delivered to Newcastle, so we're doing pretty good with that. And we are now officially into the Victorian age by about mm -hmm. a month. Okay, well, I think on that note, we're going to end this episode. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Of course, hit that like button. Say goodbye, I could be. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, and we'll be back next time um, with more historical gaming. Thanks so much, everyone.